everyone, welcome back to another IELTS reading lesson. During this lesson, we'll be looking at how to answer short answer questions. Let's get down to it. The task for this question type is to answer questions regarding details in a passage. This question type is quite similar to sentence completion questions. Again, you're supposed to answer questions with words taken directly from the text. You are also given a word limit. For short answer questions, you may have either to complete sentences or answer questions. Let's look at an example, shall we? We'll look at the questions first. As we can see, the instructions clearly state to answer the questions by choosing no more than three words and or a number from the text for each answer. The question asks us, what was the African rhinoceros compared to? That is, a tank on legs. A short answer. Again, with the next question, which type of rhino fell a number below 100? Southern white rhino, another short answer, both in line with the word limit and not exceeding three words. Now this question type tests your ability to skim for general meaning, scan for specific information, identify keywords, and your ability to look out for synonyms and paraphrasing. Do brush up on your paraphrasing and speed reading techniques, and if you need to refresh your memory, you can have a look at the previous lessons on reading strategies, skimming and scanning, and identifying paraphrasing. Okay, let's look at some tips and key points, shall we? Point number one is a repeat point. In the sense, it works for all question types, but we're gonna emphasize this again. The next point is quite a helpful one, and that is the answers will be in order in the text. Next, it's important to note the instructions and not go over the word limit. And while doing so, only use words from the passage. And last but not least, our favorite tip, look out for paraphrasing. We're going to look at strategies that you can use to attempt this question type. The first step again is to read the instructions. Make a note of the word limit. If it helps, you can underline that part of the instruction. Next, go to the question and understand what's being asked of you. Then go ahead and underline the key words in the given questions and match them to the ones in the passage to help you find the answers faster. And then you can go ahead and scan the text to find the paragraph that contains the answer. After finding the paragraph that contains the answer, read in detail and find the correct answer. Make sure the answer that you found correlates with the word limit mentioned in the instructions. If you feel like you're spending too much time on a particular question, in the sense it's taking you longer to find the answers, just skip it and come back to it later. It's time for an exercise now. You can complete this exercise on your own if you'd like to, but we're gonna go ahead and discuss this now, following the strategy we just discussed earlier. Looking through questions four through eight here, we can use our prediction skills here too. For the first question, we're looking for some sort of item that has been found in the fancy food products. So we should be on the lookout for some sort of ingredient or item. For the next question, we're looking for a specific place where we can find the number on the jar. So for example, on the top or on the bottom, etc. The third question is looking out for a value in terms of currency. So we should be on the lookout for numbers, possibly with the currency side. We're looking for a POC or point of contact in the next question. So we can assume we're looking for a name of a position. And for the last question, we're looking for a value in the form of currency and a number, that to the maximum. Now let's go ahead and skim and scan through the text, underlining any keywords. Remember, keywords include numbers, proper nouns, dates, times, etc. As the answers come in order, let's go through the first paragraph and see if we can find the answer. Now the first question is, what has been found in fancy food products? So we can go through the first paragraph. As the answers come in order, let's go through the first paragraph and see if we can find the answer. Now, the first question is, what has been found in fancy food products? So as we go through the first paragraph, we can see the answer in the first sentence itself. And it is, Fancy Foods wishes to inform the public that pieces of metal have been found in some jars of Fancy Foods chicken curry, that is the spicy version. So the answer is pieces of metal. Now, since we don't have a word limit given, this answer will do. But if we had instructions where it said no more than two words, the answer could be metal pieces. Moving on to the next question. 
Where can you find the batch number on the jars? Reading a bit more, we can see that the answer is in the same paragraph, last sentence. The batch number is printed on the bottom of the jar. The answer could be written as bottom of the jar or bottom or the bottom. Next question. How much will you receive for an open jar of contaminated chicken curry? Reading down onto the next paragraph, we can find the answer in the last sentence of the second paragraph, and that is $5. Now this was a little tricky because there are actually two numbers there, $10 and $5. We need to read in detail to see what those numbers mean. This happens quite a bit in the reading exam where they will throw in information to distract you. You will have to make sure that you don't just write down the first answer you see, but confirm it by reading through the rest of the sentence. Okay, next question. If you have eaten chicken curry from a jar with one of the batch numbers listed, whom should you contact? Let's read further down to paragraph three and see. Yep, the answer is in the second line in the third paragraph, and it is the retailing manager whom you should contact. And the final question. What is the maximum reward Fancy Foods is offering for information about who contaminated their product? There's a big giveaway in terms of where to find the answer, and that's under the heading Reward. In the first sentence, we can see two values, $10,000 and $50,000. We need to find the maximum number, and that is $50,000. So that's our answer. And that's our lesson. And now a quick recap before we end. This lesson taught us all about short answer questions in the IELTS reading exam. We learned what this question type entails, the skills needed for this question type, tips and key points, and a strategy to attempt this question type. See you for the next lesson where we'll cover word limit questions.